Sunday to everyone this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are excited and glad in it. We are glad to welcome you to our service this morning. We also want to welcome you to Pentecost Sunday, the day that we remember and celebrate the actually beginning of the Christian church and the day that we are reminded that God lives by faith in each and every one of us. Let us all pray. Lord, we welcome you to this place. We feel your sweet presence and your embrace. You allow us to walk around in this world with your strength you, and your assurance that you are with us and that you've never left us. You've never forsaken us. And if we but look, we will see you walking ahead of us, behind us, and around us. Create in us such a clean heart that you are welcome in our presence and in our heart. We thank you, God, for everything that you have done for us and will continue to do. Because you, O oh Lord, are God and God alone. We thank you for everything that you have always done. In the precious name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love and for these blessings we lift our hearts in praise without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Let us greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. Come and worship. We will praise the one between, within, and over. Trust in the one who co-creates the was, the now, and the will be. Our hope is in the one who creates expansive love, calling us to do the same. Follow the one who never breaks covenant. We follow the one whose extravagant love calls us to co-create justice for the oppressed, feed the hungry, unlock prisons, and welcome strangers, orphans, and widows. Praise the one whose justice is graceful and inclusive. We praise the spirit that spans the ages. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 422, Jesus, Thine All Victorious Love, 422.
sorry. Flaming God of Pentecost, let us speak in tongues of comfort to those weeping over the bodies of their loved ones shot by troubled gunmen, killed in border classes, dying from COVID. Let us speak, speak in tongues of courage to those living in fear of the next shooting, the next bomb, the illness that threatens. Let us speak in tongues of condemnation against laws and policies that promote violence, prioritizing the preferences of some over the lives of others. Let us speak in tongues of care for the most vulnerable in our world, human beings, animals, and even ecosystems. Let us speak in tongues of love for you and for your people, that your language might be our language. And when our tongues are still, when we have no words to speak, let our hearts burn with your fire. Let our ears hear your words in our own native tongue. Let our skin feel the wind of your spirit, a mighty wind blowing where it will. Amen and amen. Our prayer response this morning is, Lord, listen to your children praying, found in the faith we sing, number 2193. Can you zoom in one or two notches, please? Appreciate it. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from the book of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. And he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And please scroll down. Thank you. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We were cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, 
I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one had heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking of God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show potence in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord God, let us anticipate your mighty win. The win of you, your Holy Spirit, blowing in us, around us, but more importantly, through us. Let us know and be reminded that you, O oh God, have given us power and authority and the ability to be in you. And when we forget and we feel weak and dry, remind us that you will always send your refreshing wind to cover us and re replenish us, to fill our thirsty soul, that we may continue to be your hands and feet and do your will and make this world your kingdom. We thank you, God, for all of these wonderful things that allow us to be in you. 
in the name of your son, Jesus, amen and amen. I don't have to tell you that it's been rough this past year, but how happy are we that we are coming to the end of our quarantine? Whether you are ready or not, our governor has lifted our mask requirements outdoors and in, indoors in some places. We, we almost feel free, but not quite. We feel as if we've been cocooned as much as quarantined. But I won't emphasize enough how good it feels to almost be there. But to that freedom and with that freedom comes responsibility. Our old ways of behaving just won't cut it anymore because the specter of COVID actually is still there. Our hospitality and our outreach have been quarantined and restricted as well, but we are still the children of God. And so we are still required to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those who are in jail and are sick, and to pray with those who need comfort in God and comfort those who are so much grieving. My challenge and your challenge and our challenge is how do we do this? How do we do those things that we are still called to do as children of the King? Our Old Testament scripture and our New Testament scripture tells us what we went through, going through, and where we're going. In the Old Testament scripture, we're going to talk about Ezekiel. Ezekiel, who was born into a family of prophets, but who was in captivity with Nebuchadnezzar. He lived by a river, but he was by no means free. The fact that he was in captivity did not stop him from answering the call to prophecy and prophesy by, by what God has told him to say and do. We know a lot of his prophecies. One of them, you know that song, uh, Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. But this particular prophecy is the one that speaks to us today. It is the valley of dry bones. In this prophecy, God sent, took him by, his, by the spirit and plopped, plopped him in a value, valley of dry bones. Now, I need you to think about it and visualize it with me. Because when he saw those dry bones, it wasn't like his eyes were closed. He actually saw that vision in his mind and in his heart and in his spirit. So he was describing something that was very real to him. He wasn't trying to interpret it. He was just seeing what God had, had him to see. What he saw was a valley that was so covered with the slaughter, but had been there so long that everything was gone except for the bones. And God asked the prophet, can these bones live? Now, let me stop there because you have to think that that's an odd question. God is asking the mortal, can it live? But Ezekiel, being wise, gave the best answer. He said, only you know, oh, oh God. So God told Ezekiel, you speak to the bones. You tell them you will live, that I'm going to cover you with flesh and tendon and nerve and artery and veins, and you will live. And 
the, this fact that you will live after being dead will let you all know that he is God. So do what I told you to do. So Ezekiel spoke to the bones. He told them all of those things that you will live. Now, imagine you're talking to a, a bed that's covered thousands of bones and expecting them to get up. Well, you've got to ask yourself, do you think the bones had the ability to live? Do you think the, the bones had the ability to stand up? You would think is the spirit of the person in the bones? Well, when Ezekiel did this, guess what? The bones did stand up. The bones did come together. Flesh did come over them. Tendons did come over them. Nerve arteries and veins were reconstituted. You can remember that old uh, children's song, the heel bone was connected to the leg bone and the leg bone connected to the shin bone and the shin bone connected to the thigh bone, etc. But though they were connected bone by bone, they were not alive. So Ezekiel asks again, can they live? There is no breath in them. You see, the bones signified our works, our hopes, and our dreams. It died even for many of us as we sat in this pandemic, all the good works that we did, all the stuff that we could do, all of our hospitality, all of our care, all of our concerns, it seems as if we were hopeless. The things that we would even think to go out and do to help others, we could not, not for any fault of our own, but it felt like that we died on the inside. We were dry, we were parched. And God asked, can we live? We start now to do our good works again. We're thinking about doing our hospitality again, but we're still dry. So Ezekiel, does what God says to do. He says, I'm going to prophesy to them again and let them know that they will live. But this time, God told Ezekiel not just to prophesy to the bones, to the stuff that we did, but to the wind itself. Ezekiel was told to actually speak to the winds, the four winds, and have them come on the inside of the bones and the reconstituted bodies. The winds blew, and when the wind blew, the breath came into these bodies and they became alive. What was the difference? It was not until God spoke to the wind and the wind of the spirit that the bones and the people became animated. The first time Ezekiel was talking to bones, to works, to things that we just do, but not to the soul. The second time God told Ezekiel to speak directly to the soul of the people, it was the soul, the spirit that animated the dry bones. In our New Testament scripture, I wanna set that context for you that the disciples of God 50 days were together praying after Jesus had been, had been brutally tortured, had died, some have, and was buried, some had seen him, 
but he was not with them at the moment. But what they were doing was praying together in one place. You see, Pentecost was, did not start as a Christian celebration. It was the 50 days after the seed was sown. It was a celebration of the harvest and the first fruits. They were used to celebrating Pentecost. But what they were praying together at this, at this point was that they knew and believed that the Messiah was the first fruits and that the Messiah in the form of Jesus had come. So they were praying together, not waiting, but thankful that God had come. And because they were praying and were thankful, it says when the day, the morning, the sunrise of that 50th day came, the wind blew, it filled the room. It filled everyone that was there, men and women and children. They were then completely immersed by the spirit of God. So as they were waiting for Jesus to come back, Jesus did more than that because he allowed all of them to see and feel and experience the presence of the Holy all together. God showed up as Jesus promised. He said he would send a comforter who would remind them of everything that he had told them. He said that he would be with them all the time. He said that he would never forgive, never leave them or forsake them. So Jesus not only kept his promise, but he allowed everyone to be able to experience the presence of the holy all at the same time. God responded just like in Ezekiel. When they asked, hey, we have lost all of our hope. But God said, I will not only give you hope, I will make you alive and you will know that I am God. the same wind of prophecy blew. The same Holy Spirit is there. The same concept that Ezekiel told them in prophecy, foretelling, was fulfilled on this 50th day of celebrating the first fruit. It may have taken hundreds of, day, of years, but that celebration of the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, the coming of Jesus, not only bodily, but now in his disciples is now here. They would forever know that God is here and God is their God. What the Holy Spirit did in the day of Pentecost was to strengthen them for the rest of the journey. In our communion liturgy, we said, let us be the hands and feet of God. Let us go into all the world, baptizing and teaching them that God and Jesus is Lord. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, we now have the strength and ability to do that we would always carry with us that strength, that power, that authority that the Holy Spirit gives us. Our founder of Methodism was looking for this very thing, John Wesley. He looked everywhere. He was a man who had ded dedicated, he had born, been born into this life of looking for God. He prayed, his mother prayed, his father prayed, looking for God. They were looking for that assurance of salvation. But he always felt that something was missing in his life. He wasn't sure what it was, but he kept looking for it. Until one faithful day, 
he came to a group of people who seemed to have the very thing that he wanted. He see, they seemed to have that assurance of the Holy Spirit. They seemed to be a peace. There seemed to be something in them that was different than what he had. And after experiencing them and walking away at Alder's Gate, he asked God, please, what is it that I have? Let that I do not have. Holy Spirit, show me. And it is said these words that resonate to us today, that he began to feel strangely warm. Now that may sound like a really weird phrase, but if you've ever experienced for the first time the Holy Spirit, you know what it feels like to have the Holy Spirit surround you. It is a warmth and is a feeling of peace that you cannot describe. He found that assurance of salvation. And because of that, he began to preach over the entire world. In fact, he said when he was kicked out <laughs> of the Church of England's pulpit, because of his preaching of the Holy Spirit, he said, the world is my pulpit. He would not be denied talking about how good God is. We are coming out of a cocoon of quarantine. We sometimes may feel ourselves dry and empty because we have been cocooned. We have been quarantined. We've been pushed away. We don't have the hugs and the, and the feeling of assurances. Our friends, we can't hug and kiss and touch. We can't feel that I'm okayness of being together. Sometimes we just need the energy of someone else to say, I am all right. But in this Pentecost Sunday, Recognize that God is still calling and is still here and still feeling and still strengthening and still allowing us to be the hands and feet of our God. You are not alone. You may feel like you're in that valley of dark, dry built bones. You may actually feel like you are one of the bones or you have, have lost so much that your grief is overwhelming. But this valley of people who are just like you, we have given, we have the assurance that God is still with us. Now is the time today to re-engage with the Holy Spirit. Remember, remember, remember the time that you first realize that God loved you? Remember the day when you knew that God knew every hair on your head, knew your name? Remember the day that something happened that gave you that assurance that Jesus was right there with you? God understands wanting of uh, being dry at times and wanting more. That's why when, when we feel like we're alone, we have to reach out to God who promised us this comforter who's always there and reminds you that God is with you all the time, even in our salad, saddest and deepest time. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's there for the asking. All we have to do is ask. So today, as we contemplate this story of dry bones, remember the story of Ezekiel and remember the story of Pentecost, which is the beginning of the Christian church. Why don't you today, as I had to do even this morning when I woke up, ask the Holy Spirit, fill me again. 
come into my life, strengthen my heart, renew my vitality because I'm feeling weak right now. Ask God to enliven your purpose. Find yourself like the first disciples, giving thanksgiving for your first fruits, but anticipating the Holy Spirit to come over you. Find yourself like John Wesley and feel strangely warmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Find yourself here and now as God holds you and strengthens you and fills you with wisdom and courage, some that you may not have known before. Use this strength and wisdom to go out and preach the good news that God is still alive and alive in you that God loves you, and so do you. Use this time to walk out into a big world that needs your presence and is waiting for you and only you to speak the words of truth and life. Amen. And go with God, people of God. Amen and amen. Cindy? And please join me. Our response to the sermon will be found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 420, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. We do respond to God's breath and his urging and his nudging and the word through our faithful giving. We thank you that God has breathed on you, old Audubon, and you are faithful givers. We thank you for continuing to give and giving your offering online because God does love a joyful and hilarious giver. And you have in your giving allowed us to be the hands and feet. The link for giving is at oldaudubon250.org and we thank you for donating, amen.
It is now time for our announcement. As usual, do not forget to uh, print out the prayers and concerns at the top. We appreciate that you do continue to pray always throughout the entire week. And God has con continued to answer and hear our prayers. Our uh, virtual wor worship uh, services are continuing. However, we are looking into it and we will have a, um, uh, we are looking into going into in-person services. Um, and definitely look into it because Constant Contact will give you the information for when we are back online. Don't forget that we do have um, in-person uh, Bible studies on Wednesday evening. Um, so we're starting to do that, to be in person uh, in anticipation of us being in in-person worship. Our second quarter mission is Maryland Food Bank, which does help uh, and feed food insecure individuals. Um, they have definitely um, needed more help now because even though people may be war working again, um, they are having to choose between medicine and food. And the Maryland Food Bank helps to uh, bridge that gap. If you could uh, scroll up a little bit. Um, we would like you to, um, as you're shopping on, on Amazon, please designate Old Audubon, uh, Baltimore, United Methodist Church. Every time you uh, buy something from Amazon, uh, the church gives a small do donation but it adds up, if, especially if all of us do this together. So we thank you for continuing to do that. Um, we do have, uh, we need volunteers to um, volunteer at the Maryland Food Bank and the Movable Feast. Opportunities are available. Please uh, contact the church about it. And I know that several of our members have started to volunteer again. So we appreciate your being the hands and feet of God in this world, amen. We do need still volunteers uh, for, uh, for our O's parking. Um, we, the, let's see, we, we are using this to, um, um, to be able to replace our carpet. Uh, as June said, think of it as a time tie. Um, we have already uh, raised some money, but we need some more money for the carpet. And this is money that people, when they are using our facilities, are glad to pay to be able to just be able to walk in the in the uh, to the game. <laughs> so we appreciate um, um, uh, those who are volunteers. Um, we have a task force for, um, and it's actually, we'll be meeting on Monday with our um, uh, COVID reopening. Uh, so please stay tuned. We're expecting news very shortly about the reopening date. Amen. And um, I think that is the, the end of these. Um, oh, and if you do need to get vaccinated, please let me know. Uh, we have the ability to um, to uh, help you to get vaccinated. And as Co as uh, uh, Betty says, the food bank uh, provides food for many part pantries in our city. And we go um, to volunteer as individuals, not as a church presently. Amen. Pastor, may, no I add one, may I add yes, something about, about parking? If, if you have thought about doing Orioles parking, but you haven't done it before, you need someone to show you the first time and, or maybe to just partner with you as an individual. It's really kind of a two person job. And June Risley and I would be happy to be that person um, so that more people who might be thinking about it, even if you just did it once a month, it's loads of fun. The people are in a good mood going to the game. It's not a lot of um, logistical work to make it happen. And it's so beneficial to the church. I think that number is now over $3,000, which is about a third of the way toward our new sanctuary carpeting. Yay. Thank you. Amen. And 
Now it is time for sharing of our joys and concerns. We thank you for the community in which you have placed us, for the brothers and sisters with whom we walk this pilgrim journey. Yet we confess that we sometimes fail to love as you love. We push aside those whom we believe are the least in your kingdom. We fail to see your kingdom in parables because we fail to see your kingdom in each other. Form in us a new vision of community in which there is neither east nor west, neither south nor north. We pray for the sake of your kingdom that both is and is not yet. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together and please unmute as we pray together. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Be done. On, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Okay. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our sins. trespasses as we forgive those, forgive those who trespass, trespass against but And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, is the kingdom and the power and the and glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And our closing hymn today will be also found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, 384. One second here. God, the Holy Spirit, 
You are the restless breath of love that sweeps the world. You move where you will, breaking down barriers, stirring hearts to change, making all possible. Inspire each one of us to hunger and thirst for justice. Come, Spirit of God, sweep through our world, bringing great change. May the bounty of your goodness be shared more justly, so all may share in the rich blessings of your creation. And for us, bring transformation in our praying and living so that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. Amen and amen. If you all would stay,